Good morning. Welcome to worship on another beautiful Sunday. This is the third Sunday uh, in the season after Pentecost, and we are so glad that you've come to celebrate another Lord's Day with us here via Facebook live streaming at Central United Methodist Church in Mount Airy, North Carolina. Thank you for being with us. We miss you. Uh, we miss not being together uh, in this uh, sacred space, in this uh, special place. But we are so glad that through uh, the technology presented uh, by the internet and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are indeed together as we worship today. I want to thank everyone who participated again in last week's uh, Salvation Army food drive and also uh, in our Pick Up and Pray event that we had as well. Uh, thanks uh, to everyone who coordinated that, everyone who responded. The response was great. And uh, I invite you again to come by and spend some time at the prayer net, our prayer, prayer line. Uh, some of the, uh, or all of the prayer requests that were made uh, anonymously uh, are pinned up there with clothespins. And they've been written on colorful uh, three by five index cards. And I invite you to come and read through those prayer concerns and to spend a moment here in our churchyard and to pray uh, for those folks and for those concerns and your own concerns as well. And again, if you have any prayer concerns, you are welcome to share with us on Facebook the posts. Uh, we only ask that you make personal prayer requests or that you have the permission of the person for whom uh, you make the prayer request. Uh, we want to respect people's privacy, but we also want to share uh, in our prayers and in the power of prayer and God's response to those prayers uh, through the mercy of Jesus Christ. Uh, today also is Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all your, you dads out there. Ha happy Father's Day to all the men in our lives who made a difference. We are thankful for you. And in that spirit, before we begin worship today, let's pause for a moment of prayer. For our fathers who have given us life and love, that we may show them respect and love, we pray to the Lord. For fathers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope, and their family and friends support and console them, we pray to the Lord. For men, though without children of their own, who like fathers have nurtured and cared for us, we pray to the Lord. For fathers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to their children and have not sustained their families, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's worship.
The hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. Come and see what God has done. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. Let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts and hands to God in heaven. Our first hymn this morning is The Head That Once Was Crowned. Today's Old Testament lesson is from the book of Genesis, chapter 21, verses 8 through 21. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son. For the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. 
But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For it is through Isaac that offspring, offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a, a wife for him from the land of Egypt. Today's Psalter reading is from Psalm 86. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. In the day of my trouble, I call on you, for you will answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to, the ser to your servant. Save the child of your serving girl. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Today's gospel lesson is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 through 39. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciples to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they are called the master of the house at Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. 
Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the word of God for us, the children of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now please join me as we affirm our faith using the, using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, as we join in singing this little light of mine, as found in your bulletin, would the children please gather around for our children's time? sure this works. Yay, good morning. Well, good morning. Um, hope everyone is doing well and having a great day and happy summer. Yesterday was our first day of summer. Are we excited about that? Eh, maybe, maybe not. And also happy Father's Day to all of our fathers and all of our father figures out there. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. Okay, so in the last several weeks, well, sadly months, we have been doing things to keep ourselves busy. While we've been staying at home and not being able to do a lot of different things that we normally would be doing. Things around the house, we might be working on some gardening and stuff, maybe doing lots of crafts, playing different games, yeah, and maybe reading. How many of y'all been reading? Um, so different things. So I know many of you have been doing some fun activities and I've seen some of these. So I know, a couple of people have been building Legos. Every week I get to see wonderful creations for some of the kids of all of their Legos that they've been building. It's amazing. And then I've been seeing people put puzzles together. I will say, you are all pros. I mean, it's amazing. So have you ever lost a piece of your Lego creation that you're making or maybe lost a puzzle piece? Hmm. It's kind of hard to complete, right? Or if you're missing a Lego piece, it may not look right or it may fall apart. And if you're missing a puzzle piece, it just doesn't look good. So, hmm. you know, and you know I like to share different kind of fun little interesting facts. So I have a few for today. So this first one, the most Lego bricks um, used in, crea in a creation were, okay, I gotta get this right. 5,805,846. Whew, little teeny tiny Lego bricks. I would not want to step on them. That would hurt. Now, 
And they even drove a car over it. They made a bridge. They built this huge bridge and drove a car over it. How awesome is that? Now, all for all you puzzle people that like to build puzzles and put puzzles together, there's a puzzle out there that you can buy and you can purchase if you have about $450. I don't have that to spend on a puzzle. <laughs> it includes 40,320 pieces. You better have a lot of free time to put that puzzle together. And the images are amazing whenever it gets done. Hmm. So thinking about all of those puzzle pieces and all of those Legos, I wouldn't want to be the person that counts all of those puzzle pieces or Lego pieces. I wouldn't want to be the person that says, well, there's about 5,000 there because I would probably get it wrong. And I wouldn't want to be the one counting them because in, in, I would probably drop one and lose a piece and the package would be put together and someone out there would be missing a piece. Hmm. So I wouldn't want to guess these things. Would you like to guess on those things? I would probably get it wrong. Yeah, you might boo. There's also these games that you can play. I don't know if you've ever played these or not, but they're like little guessing games where you have a jar full of like, let's say, M&Ms, and you have to guess how many are in that jar. And then there's also this wonderful guessing game that's been around for years, and it has a wonderful slogan, and it is, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? Can you guess? Hmm. We could be guessing um, all different types of numbers, but to get the correct answer every time is nearly impossible. However, that would be a cool talent to have. To get the correct number, you just have to find a comfortable spot and start counting, just like those that may count the Lego pieces or a puzzle piece for, a gist, um, for their jigsaw box. So I have an activity for you. Okay. I want you to touch your head. Everybody touch your head. Okay. Now feel around. Now start counting. Can you, can you start counting? I'll, I'll wait. Okay. You'll just take your time. Oh. <laughs> so there will be some people that could be sitting and counting for days. And then there are some that may take a little less time. Hmm. So... I gotta switch my page. Huh. It's almost impossible to count how many numbers or how many hairs are on your head. If you can do it, good job. But you know who does know how many, num how many hairs are on your head? God. God knows everything about us and even knows how many hairs are on our head. In the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 30, Jesus said, and Pastor Danny just read, that even the hairs of our head are numbered. How amazing is that? God knows everything about us and loves and cares for us from head to toe. God knows about the times that we're happy and those times that we're sad and even when we're in pain or when our hearts need comfort. And the many times that we ask God for guidance. There's no guessing game for God. His number is always right. And no matter if the little piece of our heart seems to go missing or wander off, we are a full picture in the eyes of God, and God continues to love us. So here's what I ask for you, is to keep creating wonderful things, having fun, because God sees you as a wonderful piece of his creation. Let us pray. Dear most gracious and heavenly Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for our fathers. We thank you for every person that has stepped up in, um, in that role of fatherhood. Lord, we just continue to ask for many blessings upon this church and the people of this community. And we ask that you keep us safe as we go out onto this world. Lord, we um, are eager to enjoy the warm summer days ahead of us. And we know that we're going to have wonderful time together as a family. Maybe we'll go on trips. So please, Lord, keep us safe as we go on our trips. Lord, continue to bless our hearts because in our hearts we all need a little bit more blessing. Lord, we know that you know every hair on our head. You know every thought and every concern on our hearts. And we just lift those up to you today, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, Keisha.
That would be a tough job working at the Lego factory. But God knows us intimately, and we are so thankful for that. And because of what God has done in Jesus Christ, he knows even more about us than we know about ourselves. I want to continue to thank you for supporting uh, the ministry here at Central United Methodist Church, even do the, during this time of a global pandemic and when we can't be together face-to-face -face here in worship. Many of you have been either dropping off uh, uh, your tithes and offerings here at the church with your with checks or you've been mailing those into the office. We also have an opportunity, uh, the means for you to give online and we thank you so much for that. But you're not only giving uh, in that way, you've also given of your time and your talents through uh, the food drives that we've had. We've, we've been supporting three food pantries, at, at least three. Uh, we've got Yoke Fellows, uh, Salvation Army and the Little Free Pantry over at Surrey Community College. Thank you for being faithful in supporting that as we try to feed people who are hungry in this community. Thank you also for uh, uh, giving when we learned uh, about the need of a, a, a mom, uh, a single mom in this community. Uh, you gave abundantly for that and we thank you for that. And we thank you for your support of uh, through making face masks to help people protect themselves and others. The mask that we gave away last weekend. And also we thank you for sharing in the ministry of prayer and being faithful in that way as well. And as we celebrate all the ways that we are giving here to advance the kingdom of God at Century United Methodist Church, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we prepare to receive this morning's offering. Dear God, you have gladdened our hearts because you are good and forgiving. You abound in steadfast love. You do great and wondrous things. You alone are God. We thank you. We thank you, O oh God, for hearing our prayers. We thank you for listening to our cries of supplication. When we are in trouble, we call upon you, for you will answer. And when you answer, you answer according to your good and perfect will. Your provision meets our need in ways we cannot anticipate. We thank you for your graciousness, especially the graciousness embodied in Jesus Christ. As a sign of our thanksgiving, we give you your tithes and our offerings. We ask that you receive these gifts, accept them, bless them, and multiply them, that they may accomplish your will, glorifying your name and spreading the good news of your kingdom. We pray together as your church in the name of our Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
You may have noticed that Kanet is not with us this morning. Kanet and John are in Lake Junaluska, North Carolina. Originally, this was the weekend uh, we would be having our closing worship service for our Western North Carolina Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. Uh, most of us had already made uh, reservations at hotels and rental properties uh, to spend the week up there. Some of us were able, were able to get our deposit back, <laughs> and some of us were not. And uh, Kenneth and John were among those who could not, but she's getting to enjoy some beautiful scenery up there at Lake Junaluska. A uh, very wonderful, uh, restful, beautiful, peaceful place. And so, hello, John and Kenneth, and we hope that you've had a wonderful time at Lake Junaluska, and we look forward to you coming home, and we're uh, praying for travel mercies that you return safely. So, thank you. Let's take just a, a moment of silent meditation as we join together our hearts in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, you are God incarnate, yet you chose to live as one of us. You endured our hardships, you withstood our temptations, you underwent our humiliation, you shared our suffering, and you died our death. Yet God resurrected you from the dead after three days, and the shedding of your blood has freed us from slavery to sin and the resurrection of your body has freed us from the bondage of death. In our baptism, we have been crucified with you that we might die to our lives of sin and we might be resurrected into new life in you. Dear Lord, if we have held any part of our lives from you, show us. Help us not to keep secrets from you and help us not to deceive ourselves. Help us to, to completely surrender each and every part of our lives to you so that we may experience new life in you to the fullest extent. Make us bold to acknowledge you before others and to be faithful witnesses in our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. Lord Jesus, you taught us that God our Father watches over us that not even a single sparrow falls to the ground without the Father's knowledge. On the cross, you demonstrated God's love for us and that you died for us while we were still sinners. And now, now that you have made us worthy to be called children of God, you've called us to take up the cross and follow you. You've called us to lead lives of sacrificial love. Jesus, in your name, we ask that you turn back the global pandemic that has taken hundreds of thousands of lives and has disrupted millions more. We pray for families that are grieving, for those who are sick, those who are suffering, and for those who are tending to the sick. We pray for scientists developing vaccines, for doctors and nurses developing treatments, and for our leaders who are making decisions regarding public health. We pray for those who are suffering economically. And Jesus, help us to repent of the injustice, the racism, the divisiveness, and all the other evils that this pandemic has uncovered here and around the world. We pray that we will all be healed in body, mind, and spirit. And we pray to you the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn is 
children of the Heavenly Father. And now let us turn to Paul's letter to the Romans, there in the sixth chapter, beginning with the second part of the first verse. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter six. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in death, like, in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, may God add his rich blessings to the faithful reading, hearing, and doing of this God's holy word. Amen. The Apostle Paul had been teaching that we are saved by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ and not through obeying the laws that God gave to Moses, which Moses wrote down in the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, which we call the Old Testament. Now, Paul's teachings unintentionally caused quite a stir. 
When people heard that they could obtain forgiveness for their sins through what Jesus had done on the cross, they could not, and that they could not be saved by obeying God's law, they misunderstood what Paul was saying. They thought that meant they could break God's laws on purpose and keep on breaking them. They figured they could commit any sin they wanted and, in, and then turn around and ask God to forgive them and then turn around and do it all over again. And that's not what Paul meant at all. Paul had a lot of explaining to do. So that's why Paul began this passage in his letter to the Christians in Rome by asking the question, should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? Paul states the question in the form of the antithesis to his actual teaching about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The question, you see, sets up Paul to respond to those who misunderstand his teaching and it allows him to then clarify his teaching. Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not, Paul wrote. Paul reminds us of the sign act of baptism. When we are baptized, it is a sign that we are dying to our old way of life, our sins, and rising to a new way of life, to be sanctified, to be made holy in Christ Jesus. Paul says that when we are baptized, we are united with Jesus in his crucifixion. And since the death Jesus died, he died to sin once and for all. So since we have been baptized for the forgiveness of our sins and to become disciples of Jesus Christ, we must die to our sins. At the same time, when we are baptized and united with Jesus in his crucifixion, we are united with Jesus in his resurrection. You see, baptism is a sign of rebirth. Rebirth. We are born again by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Forgiven of our sins, we are reoriented, restored, reconciled, refreshed, revived, reborn, resurrected into a brand new life. Praise God. However, it's one thing to be forgiven of our sins, to have a new life, and it is another thing to truly repent of our sins and to live a new life. Jesus' gospel is at the core of a gospel of repentance. Repentance. Now, to repent it means to change our habits, to change our way of thinking, to change our hearts and our minds, to change the way we live, to reorder our lives. You see, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we still have to choose each day between good and evil. We still have to resist the temptation to sin, uh, to fall back into our old habits, our old way of thinking, our old way of life. When Christians stumble and commit sin, John Wesley called it backsliding. Backsliding. In fact, Paul confesses in Romans chapter 7, a little bit later in the letter that we just read, that the temptation to sin remained a struggle in his own life. Paul wrote, I have discovered this principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart. But there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. The power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am, Paul exclaimed. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Then he says, thank God, the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you see how it is, Paul wrote, in my mind I actually want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature I am a slave to sin. Jesus told his followers that we have to deny ourselves daily which means in part denying our sinful nature, not giving in to the things that tempt us to backslide into our old lives so that we can faithfully follow the way of Jesus. 
You heard what Jesus said in the gospel reading from Matthew. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. That's a promise from Jesus. New life. Say it with me, new life. Right now, in the middle of this global COVID-19 pandemic with sickness and death and face masks and social distancing and closed businesses and the possibility of yet another stay-at-home order, we are all missing our old lives. At a time when we face so many challenges on so many fronts, life is far, far from normal. But Paul would ask us to stop and to reconsider what our normal life was like before COVID. You know, this pandemic is already exposing on a daily basis the flaws in our society. Not just here, but around the world. Civilization around the world. The, all the injustice, the in, inequity, the hatred, the violence, the poverty, the racism, the misplaced priorities. All of the things that divide us. The Apostle Paul says that when we are baptized, what once was normal in our lives is finished. It's over. There is no going back, he says. As long as we, as, as, as we long to get our old lives back during this global pandemic, as long as we return to go back to what was normal before this global pandemic, you know, I'm beginning to think God may just have a different idea about the future. I thought a lot about illustrating how our lives can be changed, how our lives can change, how what we thought was our normal life can be changed. And well, since today is Father's Day, it dawned on me what a change to normal life it was to become a father, to become a parent. You know, I, 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 I knew what I was getting into I knew things were going to change when we were expecting a baby, but I never really understood how profound that change would be until I held our first child in my arms. The great blessing that God had given me and Susie was also, also an awesome, an awesome responsibility. You know, I often tell new parents now that all of a sudden it was like I was taking the most important science lab in my entire life and it was a pass-fail course, no in-between, pass-fail. I was terrified. I was scared to death. The only way I could find to calm myself down was to realize that I was not alone. God was with me. The doctors and nurses were with me. The, my family was with me. The church was with me. And most importantly, Susie was with me. And when things got really scary, like when Caroline got her first cold, I had to tell myself, if people who lived in caves could raise children, well, surely we can raise children. But being a father changed my life forever. There was no going back to my old life. Church, when you accept Jesus, when you are born again, there is no going back. And really, why would you want to? Why would you want to? Yes, following Jesus is not easy. There are struggles along the way. But life in Jesus literally literally has endless possibilities. Hear that. Life in Jesus literally has endless possibilities. And all of them, all of them are good. You know, we're all anxious to get back to life as we knew it. But let's make sure when we get our life back, that our life is the life Jesus died and rose from the dead to give us. Because that, brothers and sisters, is the true life. It is the true hope. It is the true way of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Our last hymn this morning is Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ the Lord is risen today. Let's sing it together.
even though we can't dip our hands into the water here at the baptismal font, today is a great day in light of the scripture we read from the uh, letter to the Romans. It is a great day to remember our baptism and be thankful. For in our baptism, we died to our old way of life. We died to our sins and we rose to a new way of life. We were resurrected to a new way of life in Jesus Christ. Don't backslide. Don't give in to the way of this world. Don't give in to temptation. Instead, follow the way of Jesus now and forever. To him be all honor, praise, and glory. Amen.